welcome in once again, everybody, to another what promises to be really a great show. We remember we are relevant, we are topical, we are sometimes have a little bit of comedic stuff because you, you can't do everything really serious, especially when it comes to the world of politics. And uh, like I have said every show, you, I tip my hat to everybody who runs for office because it really is a 24-7 commitment and just takes a lot of work and a lot of desire. We have a great show for you today. We have a young lady that, uh, in studio that is already in uh, the Nevada Assembly. Danielle Gallant, you might be familiar with her. With her. She's running for re-election and there she is and we've got to give her a boost she is uh, uh, she's a great young lady from what I understand in my conversations with her she is also a uh, not a favorite but a pick of Governor Joe Lombardo which is very very cool and uh, you know the session next year we, we've trying to change things around, take the majority back so we can get things done. So Governor Lombardo can get things done instead of running into walls. And we're gonna find out how this young lady is going to help him accomplish that. So with that, let me welcome and bring Danielle up on camera. Thanks for coming on. Hi, thanks Dennis, I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, I know a little bit about your background, but why don't you tell the folks at home a little bit about your background? Because I know not only are you in the assembly, but you're also into uh, real estate a little bit. You're involved with your husband in his construction business, and you've also got a new business that is going on. And the only thing I remember is that she loves to ski. Are you off the bunny slope? Yeah. How, how many years have you been skiing? Since I was three. Okay. So you definitely are off the bunny slope. That's yes. cool. Yeah. That's one of the things I regret that I, I have a lot of friends that ski. I wish I would have learned how to ski because I think it's absolutely terrific despite hating the cold. And by the way, for you people looking in, we're supposed to get snow flurries here in Las Vegas tomorrow. It's cold as hell here. We've had a north wind and uh, boo. It's just, I'm a hot weather guy, so I'm waiting for the summer. Sure. I'm waiting for the summer. Yeah, that's that's great. So tell everybody a little bit about your background. She has a sure. master's degree, and she has a great educational background. So Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I, um, I do. I have my master's degree in marriage and family therapy, uh, and my bachelor's is in psychology with a minor in mathematics. Okay. I thought I wanted to be a math teacher and I Ooh. couldn't make it past calculus five. So, oh, Ooh. well, um, I hate it, man. but I went to Auburn university. So I, I picked up at 18 from, uh, the Bay area, California, and ended up in the middle of the South, deep South and <laughs> loved my time there. It was Did a little you? bit of an adjustment, yeah. but I loved it. Um, and it's probably kind of helped my roots in being Republican and conservative. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of freedom that people don't know about when the government is not in your business. And true. And it's highlighted in Alabama, especially when you come from an overregulated state like California. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so very I very overregulated. Yeah. Um, it's so it, it's awful. Like they, if you're building a house there, they'll tell you how many windows you're allowed to yeah. put. Yeah. I, I, you know, I was born and raised in the LA area. And uh, I talk about California, and it just breaks my heart what has happened to that state, both governmentally and as far as the expense. And, you know, they, they, they have problems like everybody across the country has with, you know, homelessness and crime, and we're going to get into some of, those, uh, some of those issues as well. But, yeah, it, it's, it's tough being there. And uh, like I say, there's certain aspects of living in California I miss because it was fantastic when I was there and that was a long time ago. But anyway, uh, moving on, you have a certain position in the assembly. You are the minority leader. Not quite. Not, not quite. <laughs> so the minority assistant leader in the South. 
So okay. There's a minority leader, and then there's an assistant minority leader in the north and then in the south. And then in the south. Okay, mm -hmm. so what are your duties then in, in the uh, assembly? Um, as my leadership position? Or, yeah, or, okay. yeah. So, both, actually, both. Both, yeah. So um, my leadership position is, my role now is to support the candidates that the Gov has endorsed and help them get across the finish line. So Great. I'm raising money. Great. I'm mentoring the candidates because um, these are very smart and accomplished people, but they've never had to run a campaign. They've never really been yeah. in politics before. Yeah. And so it's a whole new ball field, right? It's a whole new playing field. And so I'm kind of just helping them through this process. Um, I don't think the Republicans have done a great job over the years of mentoring new candidates. And I looked back two years ago what I wish I had, what, what the support I wish I had. And so I'm trying to give that to the new candidates now. That's um, great. And they're easy to do it. They're like yeah. little sponges. And uh, yeah. it's amazing that they're just so eager and so excited to be able to learn this process. Yeah. So do they call you Danielle or do they call you mom? <laughs> you know, it's funny. We've been you joking know? that they're my children, but <laughs> they call me Danielle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. And I'm sure you got some great advice. You know, that brings me to my next question. You had no political experience going into your race, but yet you kicked ass in the primary. Thank you. You really did. Why do you think that happened? What was your message then when you were out knocking on doors, doing it town halls, doing fundraisers, and got to the point where our governor really is behind you, has endorsed you as well as the other people, which yeah. is great. Yeah. So you had to show something special. I guess I did. So, uh, you know, I think there some people have instincts and some people yeah, don't. True. Um, and so the, the feedback that I've gotten um, from a lot of people who have been in this world for a very long time is that you can't teach instincts. And somehow true. I just have a certain level of instinct that has helped me get through this first stage of it. But I'm also very goal oriented. So once I set my okay. sight on a goal, then the work just flows and there is no stopping until I accomplish That's great. it. That's great. Yeah. That, that is absolutely great. Do you ever think, Danielle, there will come a time where there'll always be a majority uh, and there'll always be a minority and that's the way things work, but do you ever think it's possible or there will come a time when there is less partisanship both in the Senate and the Assembly where you guys could get together more and get things accomplished that are good for the state of Nevada or that will help the governor's agenda? Uh, if you take a look at history, when the Republicans were in the majority mm -hmm. back in 2015, they allowed many more Democrat bills to be heard and have their day in the sun than the Democrats have ever allowed for us. We tend to be much more fair as a party. And so I think if you want things to be less partisan, there needs to be more Republicans in the assembly. Yeah. Yeah, well, that makes that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. You know, let's t let's let's talk about education. For example, I know education is a uh, is a real favorite of Governor Lombardo, and rightfully so, because the educational system here in Southern Nevada and and Clark County in particular has some problems, has some issues, and I'm assuming that. The other side, the Democrats, they have kids. They send in their kids to school. They want to get them a good education. So why are they bucking heads about getting some good educational reform? How do you see it? Well, you know what's interesting is that the more and you have kids. I do. They're going to school. They are, but more the a higher percentage of Republicans in the assembly have kids more so than the Democrats. There are a lot of single, no kids, and didn't, the Democrats. Didn't know that. Side. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's one difference. Okay. Um, I 
I, I do. I have two little boys. I guess the 12 year old's not so little anymore. He's almost as tall as I am. Oh. <laughs> and we chose to send our kids to private school because mm -hmm. we knew that the public school system was not going to meet our kids' needs. Right. Um, and I'm very sensitive to that. I went to public school in California, but I had dyslexia. And so I really struggled with a lot of my teachers mm -hmm. supporting the work that I was doing in my learning skills class to be able to com combat and sort of trick your brain yeah. um, to deal with the, the ailments sometimes wow. of dyslexia. So I'm very sensitive to the fact that one size does not fit all. Yeah. And I think it's really sad that the Democrats have decided this is the, so the hill to die on. And they're losing silly well i mean they are taking away an opportunity because now it has turned into we fund a system rather than funding the kids and let me tell you the history of section 8 which is like government housing mm -hmm. it used to be that they would dub like a huge apartment complex as section 8 yeah right and it created ghettos and the government knew it was bad to have all of these you know people with no jobs right. and low ses in one place. And so they decided to then give it, give a voucher to the client and let them take it out onto the open market. So private owners, because I'm in property management, choose to engage in Section 8 or not. And now you've dispersed this population so that they have greater opportunities. They know this works. And the same premise is with school choice. I agree. I agree. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, and, and I wanted to get your take on this. On the news here the other night, uh, they showed a number of the teachers, again, threatening to go out on strike. And, you know, I am behind them 100% because it seems that, and there's a terrible shortage here of teachers, of, of good educators, the new people that are coming in, if I'm not mistaken, they want to hire at more money than the teachers that have been here for a while are making. Yeah. Now, that is totally unfair. I, well, I agree. And, totally. And if you take a look at the teacher salary, the entry level is like 45000 yeah. a year. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but when I just got out of college, I was making $30,000 a year living in San Francisco. And I had to work my way up. But teachers that are tenured and have been there for a long yeah. time are close to ninety to one hundred thousand dollars a year. That's way above the median income, which right. is eighty eight mil eighty eight thousand. Right. So it it's a stepping stone. Yeah. And I you have to have experience in order to earn more money. Yeah. And that's the key to this whole thing is getting good educators here. And that's going to reflect in the learning that your kids do. But I think that is just totally unfair. And that's just one of the issues that, you know, we, we are faced with here in, in Clark County, uh, along with a plethora of other things. Something needs to be changed. Somebody needs to step up and get this thing straightened out once and for all. You hear about all the people moving to Las Vegas, but you don't hear about all the people moving out of Las Vegas. Why? They can't afford a house. They can't get the right kind of job. And they think, quite frankly, the educational system here, they're going somewhere else where they think it's better. Correct. Yeah. And we missed a big opportunity during COVID. Yeah. Because all these companies like Oracle and Tesla were leaving California. Right. And they could not get their middle management to move to Nevada because the school system was so awful. Yeah. So they chose to go to Texas where the property taxes right. are a whole lot higher uh -huh. because at least their kids would be educated. Yeah. We missed the boat on that. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Because Nevada's sunny, what, 366 yeah. days out of the year? I joke. Weather's great here. Um, it's beautiful. Outside of this week where it's been freezing, but yeah. I like the cold. <laughs> yeah. well, well, move to Reno. Okay. Well, you're close in Carson well, City. Well, I get to do that every other year for four months, <laughs> which the kids love because yeah. they get to do ski season in Tahoe. Yeah. And they're close to skiing. Yeah. 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 But then also uh, everybody from Tesla and Oracle and whatnot, they could have just been a short plane ride or a okay. quick car ride to go see family and friends. Absolutely. And instead they chose to go to Texas. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we're screwing up by not dealing with yeah. this education. Yeah. 
It's, it's just, and we want people to have a good education to stay here to, to contribute to open businesses, mm -hmm. be it professional or, or whatever. And it's, it's very, very important. Speaking of that, Danielle, what would you do or some of the things you would do or suggest to encourage new businesses to move here? Oh, we have to deregulate. Nevada is just notorious for over-regulating and pushing people out of the system or making the barrier of entry just so impossible. Um, perfect example, um, the contractors board. So we've got, so my husband's a contractor. Yes. We were, he's also licensed in California. We, he had to pass a test. He had to get a bond of a million dollars and off mm. we went. Okay. That was easy here. We had to show a certain percentage of cash in the bank in order for him to be to have up to a quarter of a million limit. So we had to show 80 grand in the bank for his wow, business wow. in order to be able to get a license to do up to a quarter of a million. So, but here's the stepping stone, a handyman. That's kind of where you start. But we have a law in the books that says a handyman cannot do a job that's more than $1,000 and that's material and labor. That's been on the books since 1970 and they've never adjusted for inflation. So. I tried to get that passed and the contractors board freaked out and I wasn't able to get it passed to bring it up to 7,600. So how is a handyman mm. going to be able to get 80 grand in the bank when he's working 70 hours a week and barely making five grand Good question. A, a week? Good question. They can't. So they do this with, I mean, the nursing compact agreement. We can't get Nevada to agree to that so we can get more nurses here. Yeah. Um, if you're an attorney and you want to come to Nevada, you have to retake the bar. Right. Not just take the law portion right. of the state. You have yeah. to retake the yeah. bar. Yeah. Um, of course, no offense, but I think we have enough attorneys in this state. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think, and the other thing is, is that we now have state licensing. Yes. And then you have um, city licensing, right. and it, we have some of the most expensive state licensing in the country. Um, it's ridiculous. I remember when I first moved here, it was like a couple hundred bucks a year. Now it's like closer to like seven to eight hundred a year. But because I manage properties in all three municipalities, I pay business licenses in all three, mm -hmm. even though I'm based in Henderson. Right. So it it's hard for people to just get off the ground with the yeah. amount of with the cost. It's frustrating. Yeah, it is frustrating. Uh, let me turn to this and ask you about. And I know it's an issue that uh, everybody in the legislature is concerned with, and in a lot of places. Let me ask you about public safety. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, with the governor heading the state, former two-term sheriff of Clark County and our lieutenant governor as well, they got a pretty good handle on what needs to be done, but there's still incidents that are happening. How do you see that or what would you want to push forward on? Well, obviously more cops. Yeah, more cops. Yeah. I mean, Henderson's got a great... Um, uh, you know, they have a, a, a great population and a great culture. So mm -hmm. I always laugh, like if somebody gets pulled over, there's like three Henderson cops, but Metro's max is like stretched to the max. Definitely. They, yeah. They need more cops. They need, um, I mean, it's hard for them to be able to meet all the needs of the community yeah. because they just Definitely. don't have the resources. Definitely. And I feel horrible. Um, and their hands are tied. Because of the laws yeah. that have been passed yeah. over the last few years under a Democrat-controlled legislature and governor. I mean, do you realize right. that our laws for retail theft are easier than California? California is at 900. We're at 1250. We actually have surpassed California wow. on this. Wow. And I go to my local grocery store wow. up in Anthem, nice bedroom community. And on a Friday night, you can just stand there and watch the place get looted and there's nothing they can really? do. Yep. It's phenomenal. Wow. 
So uh, there needs to be consequences for bad behavior. There's no doubt about that. Now, I also believe that we need to spend more time uh, on reducing recidivism. Yeah. And I learned a lot of that about that being on judiciary um, and speaking with Director Sorinda of the Correctional <coughs> Department. Um, there's a lot of um, bad, like support for ensuring that those that are in the system have a lot of contact <coughs> with their family and the outside right. world because it does reduce recidivism. So I am all in support in, and I freaked out with this bill about having iPads in the prison system. <laughs> but once I saw the numbers, it reduces crime and violence in the prison system. They have, they're able to have daily phone calls. Uh, one and free daily phone calls. Mm. They can take online classes. They can right. attend yeah. um, church services, yeah. and it it really has a huge impact. And I kind of thought, like, gosh, my kids are acting out, and we're in public, and they're bored. What do I do? Hand on my phone, and now they're perfect angels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you hear that? You hear that? Okay. <laughs> That no, that uh, that's good. I I didn't know that, but that's that's really really uh, good to uh, good to hear. What about and and I like asking candidates about this because you never get the same answer. So I want to ask you: homelessness is a is a problem here, mm -hmm. especially sensitive here because we're we're a tourist destination and. You don't want to chase away your bread and butter right? with homelessness and people scaring other people and stuff. What would be your ideas? I know it's very complicated to try to solve something like this, but what would you, what would you do to start alleviating the problem? So m mental health and addiction are the number one reasons why people suffer from homelessness. Mm -hmm. And so I think we need to spend a lot more time taking a look at the programs that are successful in addressing those issues and ensuring that people, they learn how to fish, right? Instead of just giving them a fish, here's a house and here's some money. What I've seen with those programs as well in tension, they just bring their problems under a roof. And I've tried to work with those organizations um, and 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 rent to the organizations mm -hmm. to help. And there's been a few where I've been very clear with them that they don't have enough wraparound services. And so those that are pulled right off the street and put into an apartment, yeah. they end up hoarding. They end up bringing their friends from the streets, and then we have they end up failing out of the program because they don't meet the benchmarks within the program. And then we have to evict them and we have a habitability issue because now I've got rats, I have mm. bed bugs, I've got um, German cockroaches, which are hard to get rid of. And it creates an unsafe environment for the people that are living next door to them. Uh, how, do, how do you know they're German cockroaches? Do they talk to you before they bite you? The German cockroaches are very, very tiny. And they have to, they go through the same life cycle as bed bugs. So you have to spray every two weeks to get the egg cycle broken. These are the things I get to learn as a property manager. Wow. That's <laughs> true. You're you're up to speed on all this Correct. stuff. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And actually, the number one reason why people get food poisoning is because there's German cockroaches because they go through the food. Isn't that gross? Oh, it's terrible. I know they're really hard to get rid of. That's terrible. Yep. I well, I going through the food. I could see them going through uh, sauerkraut or you know some of the other German stuff. But <laughs> I, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's interesting. And it's expensive. It costs us thousands oh, of I'm dollars sure in does. treatment to deal with that. Um, so there needs to be a lot more wraparound programs and a, a bigger focus on mental health. I mean, unfortunately, everybody. Um, comes down on Reagan for shutting down all the psychiatric facilities in California, but nobody talks about what happened prior to. Mm -hmm. And the ACLU decided to bring suit saying that it was unconstitutional to hold people in a facility without their consent. Mm -hmm. But if you have people that are not competent, they have major psychiatric disorders, psych psychotic, schizophrenia, they're not taking their meds or it takes like a culmination of meds or a team of people to help you through it. 
And so it, it's a lot more work than just handing somebody a yeah. pill. And they're a danger to themselves or a danger to the community. Correct. And yeah. They're not co competent to be able to make good Correct. choices. Right. So when, that, when they won that case, they had to open up the doors and there was nobody in those facilities wow. anymore. So Reagan said, well, why are we paying for facilities, psychiatric facilities, if nobody's there? Right. And that's been the crux of our homeless situation. And so for me, I, nobody wants to go through the hard process, but there is a way through the court system to deem somebody un, not competent to be able to make choices and have a guardianship and then be able to provide support that way. And I, I think that's going to have to be the answer. But Danielle, where do you put them? You can't throw everybody in jail. I'm sorry. That's where you have treatment centers. So if you have a guardianship, then there's an assessment to decide whether somebody needs to go through treatment, go through the process of seeing whether once we get through treatment and get you to a baseline, okay. can you live on your own? Do you need to have live in more of like a you know communal living environment? Um, and, and allow those assessments to take place. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's, that, uh, that, uh, that's well said. Uh, I know that a lot of legislature people, assembly people, Senate people, people in the executive branch, as well as city and local politicians listen to this show because we're the best thing going when it comes to a political podcast, hands down. And we even have this gentleman. This is the Donald. You know I love politics, obviously, but I also love listening to Pick Your Politics with my guy, Dennis Silvers. Are you impressed? I'm very impressed. Okay. Okay. Even though I didn't endorse him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to put out some information for people that are looking at the show. Like I say, people need help. They need volunteers. They need money. They need your support and stuff. Put out your, and if you'd like to help Danielle in whatever form, is your email address on there or your website address? Go to her website. What is that? It's uh, Danielle, D-A-N-I-E-L-L-E -L -L -E at uh, Danielle4NV.com. Okay. So, um, that's my email address. And then my uh, web address is just Danielle4Nevada.com. Uh, and everybody thinks I'm crazy, but my cell phone number, if you'd like to reach out and discuss some issues, uh, my number is 725-272-7798. Okay. Yeah. And you could, it's not a toll call or anything. And yeah, nobody thinks you're crazy. You thought it was crazy when you no, called me over the no. weekend. I actually answered. <laughs> you, let me ask people in the studio, you, you think she's crazy here? No, they're loving it. <laughs> They are, they are absolutely love it. All right, you have uh, town halls coming up. You got meet and greets. You got coffee clutches. Yeah. What have you got coming up so people can meet you? They can see you. They could get to know you a little bit. And I always say you've got to vet the candidates mm. before you make a decision on who you're going to vote for. And of course, that's the most important thing. You got to get your butt out and go vote. So yes. what have you got coming up so in the way of events and i'm not talking about on the slopes or anything hopefully this weekend we'll be on the slopes oh boy <laughs> um so we've got some fundraisers that we are working on planning and um as we get closer to election time then i do a lot of town halls i do a lot of coffee meet and greet so if you want to stay up to date on those Go to my website, right. sure, sign up on the contact right. list, and then you will be emailed. Yeah. Um, I promise we don't email that much because that's annoying. Yeah. And um, <laughs> oh, well, I have three emails I have to manage now. Do you really? Oh, I have boy. my ledge email, I've got my campaign email, and then I have Ooh. my work email. And so I, I don't want to blast you with email, but when events come up, you will be notified. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, I like the coffee thing. That's always good. Those are so fun. Co- yeah, I'm a huge coffee drinker. And so. I get a lot of independence at Do the you? events. Yeah, because they're independent. So during the primary, they're not getting their doors knocked on. Right. And then in the general, they make a choice. Right. Then you know, and in the general, like my district's eighty percent Republican. So in, I knock all the Republican doors in the uh, um, primary, mm-hmm. and then come the general, I just do a ton of events. So anybody that would like to meet me, they can come. Yeah. But if you're an independent, you're an independent because you don't want to be bothered. So I'm not going to go right. knock on your door. Right. Um, well, and smart. Yeah. And I end up like, you know, one of the things I find so interesting <laughs> is that. The reason there's so many independents is because they feel differently about abortion than Republicans. But on all the other issues, they're in line with Republicans. Mm -hmm. But only 8% of Nevadans know that abortion is protected up to 24 weeks. So when I get those independents coming to the coffee and I educate them on that, they pretty much are jaw dropping and saying, oh, my gosh, it was a voter initiative. Nobody can change that from the governor on down, which means I can vote Republican all the way down the ticket. And that's how I ended up changing a lot of independence in my district. That's, that, that is very good. All right, let me ask you this. You've had a taste of the assembly, the taste of state government, met a lot of people, obviously. What is making you want more? What is making you run again? Oh, well... I only got my feet wet this time. I understand. I and understand. There's a learning curve up well, there. Yeah. So I feel like I haven't really wrapped my arms or my head around exactly how that place works. Okay. Plus, the voters, they trusted that I would represent them. And so you need to have somebody that's got some experience and history up there mm-hmm. to adequately represent mm-hmm. them. So my promise to them was to represent them. And I don't feel like I did that to the fullest last session because okay. I was trying to learn. Right. And there's a little bit of a, oh, you're a freshman, yeah, which is weird because I'm 44 years old with two kids. It's not like I'm 18 years old and just left my no. house with my parents, no, right? No, that's, no, you're, um, not, you're not 18. That's obvious. And then I just like, I think our, our governor, Governor Lombardo has really inspired me to um, take some steps to really build the Republican platform. Yeah. And I'm still new enough that I have hope that we can do it. Yeah. Um, and I think we can do it under Governor Lombardo. We've yeah. never had a leader and a team player like him. Yeah. He really wants to help everybody. It's I know. I don't, I mean, since I've lived here, we haven't had a Republican governor like that. Yeah. Yeah. I know. We gotta, we got to help him get his uh, agenda. We have to protect his veto. That is like the number one thing right now is to protect his veto. Next cycle, I'm really hoping that we can make some headwind to to just really explode his his goals and his platform. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because he wants to do good stuff. He's such a good man. Yeah, he's a very good man, as is our lieutenant governor, as is Stavros Anthony. Yes, Stavros is the best. I've joked with Stavros. There was a lot of times up in session where I could... He and I could get away from all of it and we just go have a beer. <laughs> yeah. And I said to him one night, I said, okay, when you're not running, I said, you have the best job in Nevada because you get to go around he and goes meet around people. And he loves it. He loves it. And if everything goes bad in the state, I said, nobody's going to blame you. You're yeah. like Miss Nevada. Yeah. So I said, when you're done, I want your job. <laughs> yeah. No, he's, he, he, you're right. He's got a great job and he loves going out. Yeah. And, and interacting with people and finding out what's on their mind. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Super, super guy. I wish you wouldn't have said that about beer. His wife doesn't know he drinks alcohol. Really? Yeah. So you just blew it. So that's no, okay. I've, no, that's <laughs> not true. I've been at NASCAR with him and his wife. Yeah. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's just a good guy. I'm like, oh no. And he's great to play golf with. We play golf every once in a while. He's, he's, he's fantastic. Of yeah. course he drinks. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and he'll tell you, Stavros is the most common name in Greece. And yeah. he's so proud of that. And, and, uh, yeah. And that is absolutely, what is the date that, the next session starts, Danielle. Oh gosh, sometime in February. I don't know the exact date. Isn't that horrible? It's usually around Pretty like much. the sixth or. Okay, you don't have a circle on your calendar. No. Must be up north. No. Okay. I'm All worried right. about June and November. 
Yeah, well, that's immediate, yeah. Yeah, and immediately I'm worried about February because of the crazy caucus presidential primary thing. Because mm -hmm. half the... It's here. But half the base doesn't know about it. It's here. But half the base doesn't know that Donald Trump and DeSantis are not going to be on the state ballot. They have no idea. So they're going to show up for their presidential primary and wonder why only Nikki Haley. Yeah. Oh, and, um, uh, oh, I can't, why am I blank? Mike Pence, and he's already dropped out. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, somebody in the federal government, uh, I think is putting forth a bill to get Biden off the ballot in, you know, a number of states. But I, I think, fortunately, that's all going to be correct it and uh what yeah a waste of time yeah, yeah it is it if is. the party has chosen something just go with it total waste of time total anyway thank you so much for thank sharing you. your time anytime on the show and remember if you get a chance to meet this young lady take advantage of it she's uh, she's super she's very knowledgeable very enthusiastic and uh she's uh, gonna do all she can to to help the state, go to uh, her website, check her out, vet her, as she should do with all the candidates. And remember, get out and vote. Yes. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of Pick Your Politics. For Danielle, I'm Dennis Silvers, and we're going to be back same place, same time next week with another show, and we'll be looking for you. Hope you can join us. Until then, so long, everybody.